Hi, it's Ms. Faye, and today we're going to be covering the topic of cancer. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to explain how cancer cells are different from other cells, compare and contrast benign and malignant tumors, and define and describe what cancer is. Before we begin, let's take a look at some statistics um, that are coming from Kuwait, and this is from the World Health Organization, year 2018, so I couldn't really find anything more recent than that, but um, if we look at this year, in, in 2018, there were around 3,582 cases of cancer, new cases that year, out of the 4 million plus population that we have here. And if we break down um, the types of cancers or the most common types of cancers, we'll notice that prostate, colorectal, breast, and thyroid are the most common cancer. Um, and with prostate and colorectal being the most common in males, while in breast and thyroid being the most common in females. Um, and when we think of cancer, it is a universal theme, right? It is a universal disease. No matter where you are in the world, no matter which country, it, it does not um, discriminate, right? It's found everywhere. All populations are um, at basically have some form of cancer. And um, it's a disease that um, affects so many people worldwide. And I'm sure that most of us know at least one person that has been affected by this disease. Um, now, when, we, we are, when, when we're trying to define what cancer is, a lot of people wonder, what is cancer? Um, we can define it as uncontrolled cell growth and division. And if we go back to the cell cycle, um, we remember talking about the fact that cells go through the cell cycle, they go through the different phases, and then they eventually reach M phase, where they will then divide, right, in order to create more cells. And um, normal healthy cells will go through the cell cycle, they'll, they'll go through several rounds of division, and then eventually they will reach a stage where that's it, it's the end of their life, and they die due to, apop you know, with uh, by apoptosis or other means. So, what I'm trying to say here is that normal healthy cells have a lifespan. They eventually, they divide and then they eventually die and they're replaced by new healthy cells. Now with cancer cells, this division becomes uncontrolled. They just grow and divide nonstop and they kind of stop responding to any healthy signals that are present in the cell. All right, or they basically stop um, responding to those cell cycle regulating proteins that we've talked about in the past, uh, in the past lesson. Um, how does this happen? So what causes a cell to turn cancerous? And one thing that can cause this to happen is mutations, all right, or are mutations. Um, mutations are basically changes or mistakes that occur in the DNA and these, these changes in the DNA can then um, basically cause uh, the cell to become cancerous, all right? Um, and we'll talk about where mutations come from. Now, cancer affects multicellular organisms and it can lead to the formation of tumors, um, which are basically masses of cell growth. Um, let's take a look at these two GIFs here. So um, right here, you can see a cancer cell. And we notice right away that the nucleus of this cancer cell is a lot larger and darker and irregular compared to the healthy cells around it. And that is actually a distinguishing characteristic of cancer cells. They generally have irregular nuclei, uh, larger, darker, denser. And you'll notice that it almost like pops out it's just not acting normal, not, not acting like a healthy cell or the healthy cells around it are acting. On this GIF over here, we see um, the uncontrolled growth and division of breast cancer cells. And you'll notice right away um, in terms of like the division rate, it is a lot faster and a lot more frequent than a healthy cell. So this is dividing at a very fast and high rate. And that is, again, a distinguishing factor of cancer cells. Now, um, let's go back to mutations. And we said that mutations are changes in the DNA um, that can lead to cancer. And a mutagen is any substance that can cause changes in DNA. So uh, here are some examples of mutagens. 
radiation is a mutagen, so are certain chemicals and certain infectious agents. Um, so being exposed to high amounts of UV radiation, whether it be from the sun or it be from tanning beds, this can increase your risk for skin cancer. X-rays, um, so being exposed to medical, dental, airport security, at very high rates we're talking about. Um, so people who work in these fields and they're constantly being exposed to these machines, to these x-rays um, at a daily, daily basis, they are at a higher risk because they're basically being exposed to radiation. Um, chemicals, so uh, chemicals found in cigarettes, um, chemicals found in food preservatives, that's why they say um, when, you're, when you're choosing your food, try your best to um, choose foods that do not have preservatives, preservative-free, fresh foods, organic foods, etc. And um, certain ingredients of like beauty products. Ladies, that's very important. Do your research on the back of your um, on the back of your beauty products, whether it be face masks, and also gentlemen, if you're into that, why not? No judging here. Um, but basically, um, beauty products, they have a lot of these chemicals that are actually, um, um, basically, they have the capability to uh, act as, as mutagens, all right? So do your research, research um, what these ingredients are, and take a look at the packages that you are using, whether it be in the food, whether it be in the, in the, in the, um, beauty products, etc. Make sure that you do not have these chemicals and you're not being exposed to them on a daily basis. And then finally, there are certain types of infectious agents, like there are certain types of um, actual viruses and bacteria that can cause cancer. Um, a specific a specific and very common type of virus is the human the human papillomavirus, which can <clears throat> which can lead to um, cervical cancer in females. Although it can affect males, it affects females at a much higher um, rate. So uh, there are certain kinds of again viruses and bacteria that can actually be considered mutagens. They can actually cause cancer. Um, carcinogens are substances that can cause a cell to become cancerous. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between a mutagen and a carcinogen? They sound very similar. Well, uh, basically, um, a carcinogen, there are certain um, uh, mutagens that can also be carcinogens. So if a substance changes the DNA, it doesn't necessarily have to ca cause cancer because of this change. Sometimes there are certain changes in the DNA that do not cause cancer, okay? So they're not like uh, severe enough to cause a cell to become cancerous. But sometimes um, there are certain types of mutations and when you have enough mutations building up, then that substance can also become a carcinogen, meaning that it can cause a cell to turn from being a normal healthy cell into becoming a cancerous cell. Now, if we were to break this down, how does this happen? Again, it's very, 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 very unlikely that a normal cell will become a cancer cell with just one mutation. We are, we are being exposed to mutations on a daily basis just by being alive, all right? We can't help it. The, the world is filled with mutagens. Um, but lucky for us, in order for a normal cell to become a cancer cell, it basically needs to be exposed to more than one mutation, okay? This will take multiple mutations on the same um, part of the DNA in order for it to turn into a cancer, into, into you know, a cancer situation. So uh, if I was to break this down, a mutation builds up, more than one mutation happens, it keeps changing and changing and altering the DNA, and then the cell basically goes rogue. It no longer responds to healthy signals. It no longer responds to those checkpoints that we talked about that regulate the cell cycle. And cell, the division just happens rapidly, uncontrollably, and this finally forms tumors. Now, once the, the tumor is formed, this is basically a telltale sign of cancer. All right, remember, a normal, in normal healthy situations, our body wants to get rid of a cell that has damaged DNA before it even has the ability to divide. But um, unfortunately, cancer cells completely bypass that. And even though they do have damaged DNA, they will still divide uh, nonetheless. Here we have a graph, and basically, this graph is showing um, the popularity of cigarettes between the, the years 1900 and 1980s, okay? And you'll notice that 
During these years, the uh, amount of um, cigarettes that were smoked per person per day increased rapidly. Um, what we will also notice is that this, hi this highly correlates with the levels of cancer, lung cancer, that were, um, that were shown in men, okay? Which means that <clears throat> this just shows you that um, certain lifestyle choices and certain things that are present in a person's environment or what they expose their bodies to can really affect um, their chances of developing a disease like cancer. Um, so as you can see here, as the amount of cigarette consumption increased over the years, so did the cases of lung cancer in men, meaning that these two um, correlate, highly correlate. And obviously today, we have infinite number of research articles and research done that does prove that cigarette smoking does lead to cancer. It's highly correlated with developing lung cancer. All right, so what is the difference between cancer cells and healthy cells? Um, this, this table shows a lot of differences, but I want to focus on, <clears throat> on a few. The, the first one is that cancer cells grow, like we said, uncontrollably, while normal cells, are the, their growth and, and division is very controlled, and it's controlled by the cell cycle, it's controlled by the checkpoints, and all those external and internal factors that we talked about in the previous lesson. Another important difference is that cancer cells do not die. They are immortal, meaning that they do not respond to apoptosis, while normal cells do. So they have a lifespan. They reach a, part, they reach a point where that's it. They've lived long enough, and now it's time for them to die, and they will die by apoptosis. Um, another thing is that, like I said, cancer cells do not care about cell communication. They do not respond to signals. They do not communicate with other cells. They are just doing their own thing, and they are just dividing uncontrollably. Normal cells communicate with other cells. They respond to signals. They respond to checkpoints. Remember, signals, this is how cells are actually communicate, communicating with one another. Um, when we're talking about the environment that cancerous cells are present in, they do not like oxygen, and they don't require oxygen, meaning that they can survive in anaerobic conditions. Um, normal cells, and we already know that, right? Normal cells, in order for them to undergo um, cellular respiration or, or the, you know, in order to make high amounts of ATP, they need oxygen, right? It's like a requirement for life. So normal cells require oxygen. Cancer cells can live even in low oxygen or anaerobic conditions. They also prefer uh, the cell to be acidic, all right, which is not normal because our cells generally are alkaline, meaning they are basic. They're not neutral. They're slightly below seven. Oh, sorry, not below, above. They're slightly above seven, meaning that they are slightly basic or alkaline. Um, cancer cells, on the other hand, prefer acidic, and they love and crave sugar. They love glucose, and that's why a lot of uh, people say, or there has been um, studies that have said that cutting sugar, cutting sugar entirely, um, is a way to kind of treat cancer. Although, um, I don't know how scientifically proven that is, but there are theories out there that say that cutting or reducing or just getting rid of sugar altogether, basically starving the cancer cell from this glucose that it loves, can actually help to cure cancer or treat it, okay? All right, um, finally, I wanna talk about the types of tumors. And we said that cancer cells can form tumors, right? That's like a telltale a sign of what a cancer cell does. It eventually keeps dividing and di dividing and dividing and lumping till it finally forms this like mass or group of cells known as a tumor. And there are two kinds of tumors. Benign tumors are um, tumors that do not move, okay? They're, so they're immobile, and they usually will form at one body part, and they kind of just stick to each other and stick to that body part, which means they can be either cured by targeted therapy, such as chemotherapy or um, surgery, where they just remove that tumor. And generally, that is, um, that is usually it. That's it. That's how you've cured it. So um, usually this tumor is harmless in the sense that it doesn't damage other body parts. It will only form on one body part and you can remove it by surgery or treat it. It's easier to treat. 
Malignant tumors are the scary, bad tumors. These are what we think about when we think of cancer because malignant tumors can break apart from one another, as you can see in this image, all right? So they can break apart and then they can spread to other parts of the body. So they are very difficult to locate. They are very difficult to target when, when we're talking about therapy. They're very difficult to remove by surgery because they keep spreading from one place to another to another. And when a, um, when a tumor moves from one part of the body to another, it is known as, uh, the term we use to describe this is it metastasizes, okay? It's called metastasis, meaning that the tumor has moved from one part of the body to the next. And when that happens, it becomes extremely difficult to cure the tumor because it's now all over the body, all right? Um, and at that point, what, what happens is the treatment options that become used are more general. So they will use more aggressive forms of chemotherapy while they just target any, any fast-growing cell in the body anywhere. And that's why chemotherapy, the aggressive, you know, aggressive chemotherapy has such severe negative side effects, all right? And um, such as losing the hair and suppressing appetites, etc. Um, okay, that's about it for today. Um, thank you for watching and make sure to complete the assignment that follows. Have a great one.